dear friends and colleagues i am dr abdul hamid zargar an endocrinologist uh, from srinagar jammu and kashmir uh, today we are going to discuss a very fascinating case a middle aged corporate executive who at the age of 53 uh, came to my clinic with a history of diabetes for 6 months he has a family history of hypertension and uh, myocardial infarction now his routine on visit to my clinic his basic complaint was generalized weakness and not feeling well he had been a smoker for a good part of 3 decades and had quit smoking about half a decade back and there was an important history past history that he had suffered a myocardial infarction in the past so now we had a middle aged youngish guy a corporate uh, guy who is diabetes diabetic the family history of uh, coronary artery disease and he has suffered a myocardial infarction 3 years back and has been a smoker for 3 decades when i examined him we found out that he was obese his weight was 92 with a height of 5 feet and 8 inches and his bmi was 30.7 his blood pressure on treatment was 140 by 90 When I evaluated him I found out his hemoglobin A1c was 8.4 uh, not something that was a target his LDL surprisingly was 137 again not a target for a guy who has already suffered a myocardial infarction and his EGFR was reasonable 65 ml per minute per 1.73 m square Now when I looked at uh, the prescription that he was getting he was on metformin 2 grams he was on telmisartan he was on amlodipine he was on atorvastatin 10 mg and aspirin and clopidogrel ever since he had suffered the myocardial infarction 3 years back Now when people like you and me look at this data what does come to our mind one definitely he needs a good uh, diabetic control because that's why he has come to us but more important than that just at the age of 50 he has suffered a myocardial infarction and all of us know whatever data globally is available cardiovascular disease is the most important factor that contributes to morbidity and mortality in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus so we have to fortify his cardiovascular protection and understandably microvascular protection you know he should not get nephropathy his eye should be okay his nervous system should be okay but more importantly with that obesity of 30.7 we need not only to give him an excellent uh, blood sugar control but also if possible some reduction in weight now when we look at his cardiac protection uh, which is obviously uh, paramount and with his 8.4 hb a1c two important molecules that can be given to him as per the guidelines recent 2021 guidelines one either glp1 receptor agonists or hgt sgl2 inhibitors now in general people are very reluctant for injectable therapies and we have had a huge experience for a good part of a decade with sgl2 inhibitors so sgl2 inhibitor would be an ideal drug to give him on top of whatever metformin he is already taking why we know whatever amount of data we have seen over the last half a decade starting from amparag uh, which was uh, published and discussed in 2015 this study demonstrated that amparagliflozin gives a huge reduction in cardiovascular mortality by almost 40% as well as a major reduction in all mace in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus and this was one drug that in this particular study were shown that if given to people who have an established cardiovascular disease there's a major reduction in cardiovascular death and all cause mortality which is important to remember and which is important in this uh, particular patient apart from this there have been other studies apart from amparag there was a couple of years back a study published known as amparheart in this study patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus were studied 
where amphagliflozin was shown to result in early and significant reduction in left ventricular mass. It means if there was left ventricular hypertrophy, progressively over a period of time, you could document that it is getting normalized as detected by cardiac magnetic resonance imaging. So thereby suggesting there was some reverse modeling uh, of the heart if hypertrophy had occurred. Lots of mechanisms have been shown to be responsible for it. And among those mechanisms include osmotic diuresis and natriuresis, which might reduce blood pressures a bit and uh, decrease in arterial stiffness, decrease in vascular resistance, decrease in weight, which is extremely important. And this weight reduction uh, with HGLT2s and empagliflozin has shown to be predominantly visceral adiposity, which is directly linked to the different components of uh, metabolic syndrome. And all of us know the impact of that metabolic syndrome on cardiovascular uh, disease. When we go to a patient like this, who is relatively youngish, 53, we expect him to live complication free for another two, three decades. Amphagliflozin alone may not be able to normalize or bring his HbA1c below seven. Now, all of us know that combination of SGLT2 and um, gliptins have already come to the fore. We have all sorts of combinations already available in the market, and we have a, in the market a combination of amphagliflozin and linagliptin. In Carmelina and Carolina trials, linagliptin has also documented cardiovascular and renal safety. And in this particular patient, in whom we have a hemoglobin A1C of 8.4, and we want it to be less than seven. We want his weight to be on the lower side. We want to have a pharmacotherapy that gives us minimum or no hypoglycemia. Probably on top of that two grams of metformin that he is getting, giving him a combination of linagliptin and ampagliflozin would be optimal. It has been seen that if you do a combination of ampagliflozin and linagliptin in the dosage of 25 and 5 to people whose hemoglobin A1c is 8.5 or more, this combination has a potential of reducing hemoglobin A1c by 1.8. Now, if a person has a hemoglobin A1c of 8.4, so understandably, this combination is liable to get his hemoglobin A1c within the target of less than 7, almost 6.5. This combination offers a suitable uh, strategy to achieve target hemoglobin A1c. And I said, uh, without hypoglycemia, without weight gain, in fact, reasonable weight loss, and also offer significant benefit in terms of reducing cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. Unfortunately, many people are not receiving the benefits of AGL2 inhibitors as cardioprotectors, particularly in those people who have already established cardiovascular disease. All guidelines have now emphasized whether it is European Association for Study of Diabetes or American Diabetic Association that if a person has established coronary artery disease, a GLP-1 receptor and or SGL2 inhibitor should be an important component of their hypoglycemic therapy. But in order to achieve that optimal HbA1c in our own index case, a combination of amphagliflozin and linagliflozin would be optimal. Thank you so much.